So you're looking to purchase an Airbnb or a short-term rental property for investment sakes and you can't make the numbers work in Orlando? Well, stick around because on this video, we're gonna be talking about, yes, the Punta Gorda area and we're getting to it right now. So once again, not getting a whole lot of traction on these videos, which kind of surprises me. Still getting a lot of people reaching out for Orlando. Being honest with you, Orlando still has a lot of value. Now, when you purchase those larger homes, maybe the seven bedroom, eight bedroom, nine bedroom, those have a tendency to have a larger ROI. Not that I'm trying to get you to spend a lot of money. I'm certainly not doing that. And I'm not saying that you can't make money in Orlando. I'm saying that there are some opportunities in other parts of Florida that you can make more money. That's all I'm saying. And trust me, I would love to be your realtor of choice for a property in Orlando. Makes my life simple. I know the area. I know the short-term rental areas very well. So back to what I was saying is that this little nugget, I went down there, I filmed for an entire day and I kind of chunked it down to a couple different sections. So today we're gonna to be talking about an area called Rotunda West. Now on this, um, on this picture here, you can see kind of like an aerial view of why it's called Rotundo. Uh, I guess Rotundo means round. I have a Rotundo in my, um, in my uh, house. So it is a browned area where the community is. So Rotunda West is in a circle um, and it's a lovely area um, that we drove through and the homes range from anywhere from the 300s all the way up to close to a million dollars. So there is a range. Now, most of the time, the homes that are in the 300s are a little older, have not been updated and do not have pools, which would make a lot of sense still. A lot of opportunities for people that want to flip homes, a lot of opportunities that I see now where people come in and flip um, Airbnb. They get a property, they get it up and running, they get it looking all cute, they get some data, some financial history, and uh, then they flip it. And they make about, you know, a couple hundred grand sometimes. Now you can also see in this next map that I have how close this is, um, how closely it is located to like a bay and harbor and close to the ocean. So it is very close. Um, I, when we went out there filming, it was a month from Hurricane Ian. So there's still a lot of brush, but honestly, with as much uh, water as this area got, you would never know. I mean, the homes looked really good. Um, yes, you can see blue tarps and it just is what it is. And uh, so, I, there's no sense trying not to disclose that. So um, you can still see the debris, but you can also see as uh, you see the footage that there's a lot of space in between homes. So if anyone ever follows my channel, you'll know that's one of my hot buttons is that I just, the homes are so close together in Orlando. My home, I could spit and hit my neighbor's um, window as well. So not not ideal homes are very far apart the um the lots are very large and a lot of them are on canals so there's water access there um, and there's a range like you'll see a newer home then an older home then you see new construction so there's a range and there's a range of um, price like i said uh, i went the lowest i found was 334.9 for a home on the mls for a three bedroom, two bath, that was 1,815 square feet. And the highest I found at, at the moment was a three bedroom, two bath, that was only 2,388 square feet for a little shy of a million. Uh, 25,500 shy of one million, it was 974,000, which I thought was a lot, even though we'll talk about that in a little bit. So um, it is a beautiful area. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for not just short-term rentals, even though 
that's predominantly the calls that come flooding in now is everybody wants to jump on the short-term rental bandwagon. And as I've said before, even though I think I'm scaring people off by saying, well, you might not want to buy in Orlando, is that Orlando, though there are a lot of people coming here, there is a lot of homes for Airbnb and a lot of people that are lowering their price, meaning Airbnb hosts. So um, where in this area that I've been talking about, where I'm gonna buy, not many Airbnbs and the prices are very high. So like in the winter months, a three bedroom, two bath goes for about 600 a night. It's pretty good, pretty good. But that's with the pool. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. Now, besides that, there's plenty of opportunity in long-term rental and in mid-term rental. And I know I talked about it in my last video, um, but long-term rental right now, there is literally hardly any available homes for long-term rental in that area. And because of the hurricane, there's people that need homes that do not have homes. So just something to think about, even though short term is great. And another thing that I want to point out is that you always want to plan A, plan B, and plan C. So if you can't short term, you may be able to midterm, that's 30 days or more, or long term. So you want to have a couple different um, backup plans, if you will. So I want to show some pictures and some homes and give you a range of what's out there. Um, and they are very floored homes, very, very, Florida-ish, Florida-esque homes. Kind of a, showing you a brand, brand new home, which is the first one. It's a three bedroom, two bath, which kind of, it seems to be a very popular um, home. Whereas here in Orlando, it's like five bedroom, six bedroom, seven bedroom, nine bedroom, 10 bedroom, you know, we, we have big houses around here. Um, like I said, brand new construction, 1,753 square feet. Listen to this price. 348520 That is a stellar price. For brand new construction, what? Yeah, and that's a nice home. You know, there's some nice finishes in that home. You see several different pictures, um, some really nice, some really, really nice, um, some really nice finishes. And I wanna say that there's a lot of builders that build in areas such as this that maybe can't compete in the Florida area, not just because of their name, but because they can't get the supplies and stuff. Because you've got the big builders that buy in such huge masses that supply chains will say, well, if you're not ordering X amount, we won't supply you with that, um, with those trusses or you know, windows or whatever it is. So I thought that was interesting. I just found that out. That's why a lot of the custom builders or, you know, builders in general um, have a tendency to go in these smaller areas because they can compete. So, um, yeah. So the second home is a four bedroom, three bath, which is an unusual size home in that area. It is also only 1,730 square feet. This is obviously an older home. It was built in 1997. So um, I wanted to just kind of give some contrast there. Um, it is, did I say it's 4'3", um, 1,730 square feet with a pool for 499,500. So just a little shy of 500,000. Um, so more, more rooms, but about the same size. Um, and then the last home that I have to show is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, which is a custom build. It was built in 2020 and it's 2,388 square feet. I will say, I didn't show all the pictures, but there's a lot of nuances, a lot of upgrades, and there should be for the price of this home. Because let me tell you what, I would have to have a lot of money to pay this much now. The outdoor area, I mean, they have like a little tiki, tiki deck looking area, outdoor, full outdoor kitchen. I mean, they really went nuts on this house. I'm wondering why they're selling it. Maybe they had enough with the hurricane. <laughs> um, it's $974,500.
So that is a lot of money for that house. So, um, but again, it is a custom build. So they, they really did upgrade quite a bit and I'll be interested to see if that sells um, at that price. Um, yeah, it's a lot of money, a lot of money for, for that house. Um, so yeah, th so there's a range, you know, like I said, I didn't necessarily show the house that was 334,000 because trust me, it had laminate, I mean, it had like Formica countertops. So if you have Formica, forgive me. Um, I, I know that used to be the thing. My first house had Formica and we were all about it, um, but not anymore. So um, that's usually the first thing that gets upgraded now. So like I said, forgive me, I, I mean, mean not to offend, but uh, it was uh, an older home. Um, I mean, it wasn't in shambles by any stretch of the imagination, but it just definitely needed some love. But there's opportunities that still had a huge lot and just um, a lot of opportunities for somebody who wants to come in, short term that, mid term that, long term that, whatever, whatever. So uh, yeah, I did it again, whatever, whatever. Someone pointed out that I say whatever, whatever a lot. But anyway, um, yeah, there's just so much opportunity in that area for an area that's so close to the water and such a charming area that um, is so close to the golf courses and so much like Florida-ishness, um, you know, uh, just, it's just really a lovely area. I did kind of fall in love with it, which is weird um, because I do love Orlando. But once in a while, it's like, wow, wouldn't it be nice to just kind of like go and not have the traffic and slow the pace. Um, but I'm not ready for that yet. But w when I am, I might be going there because I did really love it. And I do love that in the Punta Gorda area, they have 70 independent restaurants, 70. I love independent restaurants. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, I love to, you know, um, just love that whole concept of trying and, you know, chef owned restaurants. I love that. So, uh, that's my jam anyway. And outdoor activities. I'm not the biggest outdoor person, but I do want to learn how to play pickleball. So I talked about that before, but anyway, today we were talking about Rotendo West and, um, and I'd love to hear your comments. I haven't heard much. Not a lot of traction. I might have to go back to Orlando videos, but I just wanted to try something new and give some, you know, thought processes to maybe some other areas to invest your money. But if that's not what you're looking for, you got to let us know. You got to reach out and let us know exactly what you're looking for so we can get those videos out to you right away. So remember, if you're thinking about moving to Orlando or Central Florida or the Florida region in general, um, and you're looking for some help, well, send us a text, give us a call, send us an email, however you wish to connect, because we got you covered when it comes to moving to Orlando or Central Florida, and we will see you on the next video. Bye for now.